Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax. And while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Hey, Bobby, come back here. Where do you think you're going, you dope? Now, listen here, Master Robert Norton. What are you giggling about, hey? You stay quiet and you stay where you are. I'll have to put you back in your playpen. What'd you say, darling? I was not talking to you. I was talking to your son. I'll be right out. I'm almost through shaving. Well, it's getting late. Hey, stay there, you rapscallion. Papa will spank. Oh, yes, I know I look lovely, all dressed up in my new shoes and my dress and my pin. I had a proud of your mama, hmm? Are no? You talking to the baby and baby talk? I certainly am not. Must say, though, talking to him's a pleasure. No, oh, I know. He can't answer. David, I'm almost dressed. You've hardly begun. You know you're going to make us late to dinner? <laughs> my making us late would be a pleasant change. I ought to stop rushing you. I ought to just let you be late. Serve you right. Mm-hmm. It would serve to show you how irritating it oh, is. Oh, any little excuse to lecture me. Look, darling, your clothes are all laid out in the bed. Pants pressed, everything. I'll be ready before you know it. <laughs> Would have to miss the early train today just because we're going out to dinner tonight. Sock's got a hole in it. Oh, oh that's life. I know. Bobby, don't get underfoot, sweetie. You'll be stepped on. Go oh, on. let him creep around. He's oh, right. he'll get all dirtied up. He's had his bath. So he gets all dirtied up. He's a boy. Well, that's a fine excuse, I must say. Bobby, now concentrate. Mommy has to comb her hair. So you sit still while I do it. You understand? You hear me? You look a good girl yourself. He hears, but he's not impressed. He takes after his father. David, do you know, do you know you're going to have to modify your behavior? Mm, how am I going to have to modify my behavior? Well, firstly, in front of our son, you're going to have to treat me with more respect. Uh, in other words, you want me to do what you tell me to do in front of our son, no, sir? Getting old enough to notice. Mm -hmm. And you are supposed to be a good example. Yeah, any excuse to get me to do what you want, I How'd know. How'd you guess? Seriously, I am his mother. Now, that's a and... woman for you. Always pulling rank. Oh. oh, Bobby, please stay in one place. Don't pull on my stockings. Go ahead, pull They're on the them, Bobby. the only best ones I own, sweetie. Just as long as you don't tear them. You just do as you please, old boy. Don't let yourself be nagged by a woman at you such an early age. You traitor, you. Mm -hmm. You and I stick together, Bobby. One and a half against one. Well, I'm used to it. David, are you getting dressed? Now, we have plenty of time. Don't get excited. Oh, it's lovely to see the foot on the other shoe. Mm, now, I'm just going to give you five shoe. minutes. If you're not dressed by then, I'm going to leave you. Hey, where's my collar button? Oh, Bobby. Listen, please stay over on that other side of the room. Go on, skadoodle, shoe. Papa is having enough trouble getting himself dressed. It's going to make us late here. Claudia, have you seen my collar button? No, why should I have seen your collar button? Because it isn't here. Well, that doesn't mean I've seen it. Where is here? On the dresser. Oh, is that where here is? Mm, I merely asked you if you'd seen my collar button. David, I have to know where it was first, so I will know if I had seen it or not. All right, admit it. You wouldn't even know whether you'd seen it or not. That is not the point. Oh, oh, drat. Oh, drat. I could bet a million I saw it right here on the top of this dress. Yeah, now we're getting someplace. Now, let me see, let me see, let me see. Maybe it's fallen on the floor. No, it's not on the... I don't see it. It's a good thing Bertha vacuumed today, isn't it? Well, I don't see it down here any place or other. Get out of the way, Bobby. Well, let me see, where could it have the gone? The collar buttons roll, bless their little souls. I always thought it was a fairy tale about men's collar buttons. I guess it's true, though. Would you get out of the way, young man? Well, if I ever find yours, I'm going to tie it around your neck, which is exactly where it belongs. Don't you have another, darling? Of course I don't have another. Do you think I'd be looking for this if I had another? Was well, it against the law for a man to have two collar buttons? A man only needs one. Well, needs or not, I'm going to buy you a whole dozen uh... tomorrow. Baker's dozen, 13 collar well, that's buttons. that's no help to me now, and I don't want 13 or 12 either. Obstinate. David, let me fix you something else to wear instead. Come I on. won't wear anything else instead. It was right here. You probably took it. That's an interesting thought. Now, what would I take a collar button for, I wonder? Just so it would be my fault that we're late. Aha, uh -huh. so it's your vanity at stake, not just a little old collar button. No, it's my collar button Well, we'll find it, dear. Now, listen, let's do this methodically. Yeah. 
Uh, it's probably slipped off the dresser and fell on the floor. Well, it's brilliant, only it's not so, on the floor. So, now which direction would it have rolled in? That's the first thing. Did you look over there on the side of the room where Bobby is? No, I couldn't have rolled way over there. Hey, you, Bobby, you're down on the floor. Why don't you help look? If this is a joke that somebody's playing on me, I don't think it's very funny. Strangest thing, a collar button disappearing in the thin air. Very queer. Yes, Bobby, what is it? Now, Bobby, this is no time for you to start fooling. I have to find your father's collar button. Hey, what are you coughing about? What's the matter? Well, it's not any place on that side of the room. I guess I'll go with my collar hanging out. That ought to make an impression. David, now, don't get excited. Who's excited? We'll find that old collar button. Oh, look, darling, we have millions of other buttons in the house. Won't any of them do? No, won't any of them do. Oh. David. What? You found it? David, the baby. Oh, no, not again. Bertha can change him oh, David, later. not that. Your collar button. Where? The baby. David, he swallowed it. I'm positive. Now, what on earth would he do a thing like that for? David, don't you understand what this means? I don't get my collar button. That's what this means. Oh, Bobby, did you swallow it? Come on, say something, you big dope. David, I'll bet you that's what it is. I know that's what Now, it Bobby, is. you wouldn't swallow your papa's collar button, would you? You see, he's coughing. And he, he never made that noise before, well, never. I don't see how he could have possibly swallowed it. Well, he said probably the collar button fell off the dresser on the floor. Well, and I know, but the floor... Father was creeping about. You know babies put everything in their mouths. Well, now, what is it going to... I'm sure oh, that's Claudia, what happened, ridiculous. I know. Well, there's no point in getting upset. Just take Getting it upset? Yes, upset. David, it's dangerous swallowing a collar button. I just read in the papers the other day where a baby was absolutely... Well, almost... it's not as dangerous as swallowing an open safety pin. Well, that's a fine consolation, that is. <laughs> David, listen to him. Have you ever heard him sound like that? Oh, sure, lots of times. You know you haven't. Darling, we have to do something. Now look, darling, just because we've lost a collar button doesn't mean that Bobby swallowed well, it. Well, we looked every place else... Bobby, darling, you all right? Can you breathe? What do you want me to Say do? Something. Want me to shake him and see if he rattles? I don't know what makes people joke at times like this. Well, darling, uh, honestly, I don't see why you've gotten so upset. Bobby happens to be my son. Well, he's my son, too. In spite of the fact that he is my son, I'm very fond of him. David, don't just stand there. Do something. All right, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll pick him up by his heels and dangle him. If he swallowed it, it'll come rolling out. I don't understand you. I don't understand you at all. <laughs> David, listen to him. Listen. Does his breathing sound strange to you? Well, I can't hear him breathing at all. That settles it. I'm going to call Dr. Barry. What on earth for? The sooner one catches these things, the better. You're absolutely convinced that Bobby swallowed my collar. Well, I'm button. convinced enough to take reasonable precautions. Oh, not quite. oh Bobby. Hey, Claudia. He coughed. I know he's coughing. He coughed before. Didn't you hear it before? I think you ought to call Dr. Barry right oh, away. Last, you're agreeing with me. Call him right this minute. Hello? Operator. Operator. You the... Oh, will you give me Eastbrook um, 417, please? Somewhere it's hurt. an emergency, Operator. Uh, David, how is easy? He's smiling. He's smiling like the cat that swallowed the canary or the baby who swallowed the collar button. Oh, hello, Dr. Barry. Dr. Barry, I'm terribly sorry to disturb you at dinner time, but the baby just swallowed a collar button. At least we're pretty sure he swallowed a collar button. No, we're not positive, but we're pretty sure, and he's coughing. And... Dr. Barry, what do we do? I... He, he just coughed again, a little sort of a gurgle cough. No, he doesn't seem to have any trouble breathing, but... But maybe it hasn't gone down that far. Or maybe it's gone down now, farther. you're not the doctor. Give Dr. Barry a chance. All right, Dr. Barry. We'll call you back in about five minutes. And thanks a lot. Well, what did he say? Well, he says since we're not sure. David, I still think we ought to get in the car and drive down to the village, just in case. I guess we ought to call up the Reynolds and tell them we'll be late for dinner. Darling, I'm frightened. Now, there's no reason to be frightened. Bobby seems to be all right now. Here, hold him. I'll finish getting dressed. You feeling better? Di, what are you going to use instead of a collar button? Oh, hang the collar button. David, he gurgled again. His gurgle doesn't sound any different well, to it me. It sounds completely different to me, I think. Now, Bobby, sweet, you just be still. 
Daddy will take care of everything. Oh, Everything's going to be all right. I just broke a shoelace. I'll be ready in a jiffy, though. David, to think we've only had this little baby six and a half months. And, well, actually, he's not much more than a nuisance. I love him so. Oh, you'd love a dog, too, after six months. Thanks for trying to act as if you weren't terrified. Darling. How is it? Same. He's not bright enough to know what happened. I'll get my cufflinks right. I'll be, I'll be ready to scoot in just a minute. I wonder why does everything always happen at once? Why does Bobby have to swallow your collar button? Oh, now he's crying. David, now I'm sure that's what happened, darling. <laughs> you sure, eh? David, don't get hysterical. Stop laughing, darling. Please, don't. So you're convinced that Bobby swallowed that collar button? Well, look at him, David. His face is all red. <laughs> Baby's faces are always red when they're crying. Why is he crying? I don't... <laughs> because his face is red. David, you're not making any sense. Please hurry. <laughs> his face is red with embarrassment. Well, what are you talking about? He's embarrassed by his old man. Here, my love, is the collar button. David, no. Where'd you find it? In my cufflink box, right where it belongs. Oh, no. <laughs> I would have bet you a million dollars I saw it on top of the dresser. Well, are, are you sure it's not another collar button? No, I only have one. Then you mean he didn't swallow it? Well, I never could understand what made you think he swallowed it in the first place. What made me think? Well, it wasn't my idea. Oh, Bobby, you sweet, darling, beautiful, brilliant baby. You'd know better than to swallow a collar button, wouldn't you? Why, how could your father think you'd be Look such a Look at the expression dope? on that shrimp's face. He's smiling. He knows he's bright, don't you, shrimp? And I know we're going to be late, and I know who we have to thank for it. The baby? No. Yourself? No. Whose bright idea was it that the baby swallowed the collar button? I just knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I just knew you'd find some way to blame your being late on me. <laughs> Wherever folks have to wait their turn, whether it's at the beauty parlor, the department store, the movies, or any public place, those friendly red coolers that offer ice-cold Coca-Cola are understandably popular. It's easier to wait somehow when you wait refreshed, and Coke always provides the pause that refreshes. Out of my way, Joe, out of my oh, wait, way. Wait, wait, wait. Where are you rushing off to in such a rush? Oh, we're practically late for dinner, and if we are, you know, I'll never hear the end of it. David, do you think you'll ever get any place on time again? Well, seriously, Joe, I, I rather doubt it. Uh, say if you had to take a trip, for instance, and make airtime and uh, plane connections mm -hmm. and so forth. Don't you think you'd do it then? Say, that gives me an idea, Joe. A wonderful idea. I wonder if Claudia would like to go on a short trip. Well, winter is getting kind of long. I'll talk to her as soon as I can pick up some travel folders on Monday. Say thanks for the tip, Joe, and so long. Not at all, David. Glad to help. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. The parts of Claudia and David on this program were played by Catherine Bard and Paul Crabtree. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.